So I'm just gonna start off by reading a statement that Saratoga Black Lives Matter released um, a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, yeah, I got you. Uh, Saratoga Black Lives Matter joins with millions across the globe to call for an immediate ceasefire and humanitarian aid to the people in Gaza. At this very moment, there are hundreds of thousands of people in this country and beyond advocating for the Palestinian people who have been stripped of their humanity and forcefully disconnected from the entire world. Our organization recognizes the importance of using your platform to uplift the voices of the most oppressed people. Saratoga BLM chose to use our platform to center impacted people, and we are proud to say that we created a space for Palestinian, Israeli, Jewish, and Muslim people to take to the mic and share their stories with the people of Saratoga Springs. We ended the night with an interfaith prayer and vigil for people to reflect, mourn, and pray for a better world. That is why we were shocked and disgusted to discover that the campaign of Jim Montanino sent a postcard to voters across Saratoga Springs, which states that, quote, Saratoga BLM also recently hosted a pro-Hamas rally outside City Hall. Not only is this statement false, but it is a reckless and disturbing um, use of his platform and his campaign to exploit the deaths and suffering of thousands of people for the sake of personal and political gain. These lies not only endanger the community, specifically members of Saratoga Black Lives Matter and Kristen Dart, but are a part of a sinister plan that seeks to justify the destruction of an entire group of people and foster such a violent environment that puts real people in danger. Even a six-year-old child in Chicago is not safe from such violence. Next to the vilification of our group through race-baiting pictures and false connections to terrorism, it is stated that, quote, Saratoga BLM was disheartened by the unanimous jury verdict exonerating the Saratoga Springs Police Department in the Darrell Mount case. Contrary to the assumptions of many, Saratoga BLM is composed of real people, each with our own emotions, empathy, and a deep concern for the well-being of our community. We were deeply disheartened by the outcome, and it wasn't because of a deep-rooted hatred for the Saratoga Springs Police Department, but because we are empathetic to the pain and suffering experienced by the family of a young man who lost his life. Feeling these emotions, <laughs> feeling these emotions does not make us bad people. It makes us human and allows us to connect with our community on a deeper level, and we are not ashamed of this compassion as it is what drives us to work tirelessly for justice, even if that means sacrificing our safety for the sake of others. Saratoga BLM wants to emphasize that this false language used against us not only puts people in our community in more danger, and has implications, um, but it has implications far beyond the borders of Saratoga Springs. It is alarming to see such a disingenuous and racist attempt to twist our intentions and misrepresent the values of our organization, especially in a world where solidarity is needed now more than ever. In a time of crisis, we must call for empathy, justice, and a genuine commitment to peace for all people, not just a few. Any public official who fails to recognize this is unfit to represent the people of Saratoga Springs. And I just want to leave us with a quote from Audre Lorde. I see protest as a genuine means of encouraging someone to feel the inconsistencies and the horror of the lives we are living. Social protest is to say that we do not have to live this way. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you everybody for coming here um, and standing with us against um, this racist, fear-mongering, disgusting rhetoric that we have going on in our community right now, a place that has no place in our community whatsoever, no place in 2023, no place in no time. We are going to bring up a few people who are actually at our event for the end of war and the call of ceasefire and humanitarian aid to people, the end of killing of children, the end of killing of babies and mothers and fathers and families being blown up, hospitals being burned to the ground. We will have um, Joe Seaman come up first, and then we will have Cle Reverend Cleveland come up after, people who are a part of our event. Uh, hi, 
Um, I was invited to speak uh, at this rally calling for a ceasefire. Um, my perspective, uh, my parents were Holocaust survivors. Um, they went uh, in 1948 to Israel when the state of Israel was declared. My father served in the Israeli army. Uh, and uh, what I uh, want to say is that this rally had different points of view. Not everybody I agreed with. Uh, when I spoke, uh, I spoke saying that, yes, we need to stop the violence against civilians uh, in Gaza, and we need humanitarian aid. Uh, and I also uh, said that we, the hostages that Hamas has taken needs to be uh, released, and that uh, a ceasefire uh, must uh, lead us to a state to a situation where the Palestinians have their freedom and have uh, their state, but Israel also must uh, be allowed to uh, exist in peace uh, and security. And Hamas, a fascist theocratic terrorist group, should have no role uh, in that future. So it's a complicated situation. Uh, and for uh, Montagnino, who, somebody who I once supported, even considered a friend, I, I'm embarrassed to say, uh, to send out this vicious, lying, uh, racist uh, mailer saying this is a pro-Hamas rally. Um, that's unconscionable. Shame on you, Jim. Shame, Shame, Shame on you. Shame. That's why Reverend Cleveland say some words. I was at the rally. I was the one who led the interfaith prayer. Yeah. It was a prayer that was co. <sighs> I was the one who led the interfaith prayer. It was a prayer that was co-written by a Jewish rabbi and a Muslim, uh, both of whom live in the, in the Middle East. We lit candles. We held a moment of silence. We sang for peace. And I guess I have two other things to say. One is, thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor. At, that, at our peace demonstration, the actions of Hamas were roundly condemned in no equivocal terms. And that mailer seeks to condemn people for pe feeling any sort of sympathy or compassion for black Saratoga Springs residents. And that is not right. What would it mean if you were to ask people to shame, try to shame people for feeling sympathy for the emotions that black residents of our city are feeling? Uh, next, we'll have uh, one of our uh, co-founders, Samira Sagari. Thank you. A town where we have to keep humanizing my, ourselves is not a town I want to live in. An official that refuses to humanize us countless times again and again is not a official I'm going to vote for. We are humanitarian activists, no matter what. And we will never be ashamed for speaking up for the liberation of all people, especially the liberation of Palestinians. In case Jim doesn't know, 800 families no longer exist in Palestine. Refugee camps have been repeatedly bombed by white phosphorus, which is against the Geneva Convention. I've seen babies with soot all over them, half of their bodies ripped off of them, brains coming out of their head. Kids have had surgery on the floor with no anesthesia. And this is what Jim sends out to the people of Saratoga. How dare him? We are humans. We're not robots. We have feelings, we have compassion, and we have emotions. 
And it's honestly, it, it, it's extremely disheartening and disturbing that we have to come up here and talk about this. And once again, humanize ourselves again and again and again and again. Who cares if we're sad about the uh, exoneration of SSPD? Like our statement says, we are sad and disheartened because of the family, because they lost the son, no matter what. And like we've said time and time again, oppressors do this to the oppressed. They make them think that it's our fault, that our suffering is simply non-existent. This is, this is the danger that comes upon the oppressed. This is the danger that's been in Saratoga for years and years and years and years and years and years since slaves were brought here. We condemn the postcard. We, co we condemn the genocide in Palestine. And I just continue to pray every single day because I hope, I hope the day doesn't come when Palestinians, as Jim is sending these postcards, Every 10 minutes, a Palestinian kid dies. And I just hope I don't see the day when Palestinians are not here anymore. Thank you. For those, um, including some Democrats, who are surprised by Jim's actions, I ask why and how are you surprised? This man has been doing blowing dog whistles since the day that he stepped in office. He has used Saratoga BLM as a pawn in his election then and now as well. We refuse to continue to be pawns used for political gain. Once again, like she said, we are human beings. We have families. We have people who care about us. We have people to take care of. This man is supposed to be in charge of public safety. We are the public and he is not keeping us safe. He is not worthy of being public safety commissioner or of any seat inside our city. I ask the people of Saratoga Springs to condemn and not vote for Jim Montanino for anything ever again because he is not worthy to run anything in our city. He is not a leader in our city. He is not building bridges in our city. He is causing a divide in our city. What he is causing is hate. and inequality in our city. And doing that while with a smile on his face, as this is a joke. This is not a young man either. This is a seasoned man in his late 60s, 70s, acting like a child, fighting with 20 and 30 year old young adults who are trying to make a change in their community. And once again, Jim Montanino is not from this community. This is not his community. They like to point out how we are supposedly not from here. We are implants. He is an implant, and he is here to destroy our city and destroy our morals and destroy everything that we've worked so hard to continue to make. Plain and simple. This whole thing about the city council meetings is being blown up as well. There's been three city council meetings that have been tentious within the last two years. Three out of hundreds, over 120. So let's not inflate the problems. Every time black people are doing something, that has to be inflated. When other people do things, that has to be deflated. Why is that? So let's inflate this racism and put it on the front page of the newspaper where it should be and all over the news as it should be before the election because the people of Sierra Springs need to know that this is wrong and this cannot continue. They say that they want to stop protest. Is this the way do you think they're going to stop protesting? Is this the way we're going to stop a bridge, a divide between BLM and the community, because not just BLM. We are not just BLM. We are community members. We are constituents. We are taxpayers. We are voters. Our votes count. We count. We matter. That's why we say black lives matter, because of things like this. They've shown us so many times that apparently we don't matter. Saying that we had an event for terrorists, when a lot of people in the city and otherwise like to call us terrorists already, it's dangerous. It's dangerous for my children. It's dangerous for our families. It's dangerous for our friends and our community members. Those that we like and don't like. 
the community as a whole, when we fight for racial justice and justice in our police, we fight for our community. That's everybody within our community. Let's also make sure that that's known. we said that a million times. We don't just fight for black people. We fight for poor white people. We fight for the underprivileged. We fight for those who do not have a voice. Those who are not willing to put their lives on the line like we do and their reputation on the line as we do. That takes courage. What Jim did is a coward. He's a coward. He continues to be a coward and he continues to exploit people in our community. We say no more. Not on our watch and not on our dime. Too many times we have to come out here over and over again about the same things. Jim Montanino is now on that flyer. He's comparing Kristen Dark to BLM. When he was running, if the newspapers remember and the media remembers, they called him BLM Jim. They said Jim was part of BLM. He was endorsed by BLM. Now he's using this same rhetoric against somebody else. It was disgusting then, but it's not disgusting when Jim uses it. Jim continues to do this. He uses things for his own gain. Things that he said once was wrong. He appointed McIntosh while he was under investigation. When Robert Dalton wanted to appoint a new chief, he said it was wrong. These fallacies are like, it doesn't make any sense. It's clear. So people who are in the city who are believing this false rhetoric, please open your eyes, people. Please. He is tricking you. He is fooling you. He is a wolf in sheep's clothing. We must continue to use our voices, and we will. We will not be deterred or fear no matter who wins any seat, who's the chief of police, Who's the mayor? Who's the commissioner of public safety? Sarah Tugel BLM and our constituents will continue to be in the streets. We will continue to be at meetings. We will continue to hold rallies, continue to hold press conferences, continue to exercise our rights as Americans and as citizens of our community. Because we are equal and we are worthy. That needs to be known. People keep on acting like we are not from here. We are not this. We are not that. And this postcard that he put out was straight out of Richard Nixon's playbook. Straight out of it. It's clear as day. He's instigating at city council meetings and sometimes just falling for it. Because we're human beings. We can get angry. We can get sad. We can have anxiety. We can have PTSD. Depression. Because we are people. That's all we want to say. I don't think there's much else that needs to be said. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for continuing to strive for Sarasota Springs to be a better place and actually move Sarasota to go forward three years later after 2020. We're going to keep it going. We're going to keep moving here to go forward. Any questions <laughs> from the media? Thank you. Yeah. Um, has anyone from BLM uh, reached out to Montanino for an explanation or apology about this? We have not reached out to Montanino because Montanino has refused to speak to Saratoga BLM since he was elected under, under the rap of saying that he was under Saratoga BLM and had endorsed by Saratoga BLM. But he has never spoken to us. We've never had a meeting with Public Safety Commissioner Jim Montanino, who's supposed to be a progressive Democrat, one time since he's been in office. He's met with us once again before he was elected, but he's never met with us one time. He smiles at us, smirks at us, and instigates, but he doesn't meet with us as a grown man. Let me make it let me make it clear. One more time, Sarah Sugo Black Lives Matter and our supporters have never had an event for Hamas. What we had an event for was the end of the murder and suffering of children 
mothers, fathers, uncles, brothers and sisters, family members, human beings who are being wiped out. We are at once to fight to the end of a genocide. And we will continue speaking out for the end of the genocide of a people. We will continue to speak against the backing of the U.S. funds to fund a genocide of a people. That's it. Is that clear? I want to make sure. Ceasefire. Humanitarian aid. Peace. No war. Anybody else? Good. Thank you. Have a good day.